Assalamu alaikum, bismillah, alhamdulillah, so salam ala rasulullah. Okay, so we have been asking in the group, what, how, what's the best way to guide the weekly dose of the Quran sessions in 2023 uh, and beyond, beyond Ramadan? So I was going through the previous weekly dose of the Quran sessions and just showing the, the, the brothers and sisters what we did last year. Many times it would be the topic of the hour and uh, I'm sharing my screen here. Uh, for example, the New Year's Eve, that was the topic of the hour. The, uh, you know, how a new year has, how a whole year has gone quickly in front of our eyes. And that's something we will reflect on on the Day of Judgment. When Allah will ask, كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمًا فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِينَ So you can check this episode here. Uh, another question. Uh, that we uh, got, I'm trying to see all the questions. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Trying to see. Okay. Okay. That's a beautiful question. So I got the following question from a dedicated student of knowledge. And we dedicated our uh, weekly session for to, 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 add, to, to address it. So I heard a lecture about the punishment of those who learn the Quran but do not apply it. My dilemma is that I'm afraid to learn more now because I'm afraid that if I cannot apply them, apply them, I will be punished for, for them. I know that it's not the way to go, but how to address this issue? So before I go to my answers, what do you guys think is the answer for this question? Again, this is meant to be, you know, a living experience. And I know the way of the Quran book talks about the Quran as a living experience. So if somebody asks this question, I don't want to learn more from the Quran because I don't want to be that from those who learn and not apply. What do you guys think? Bismillah, Amna. Bismillah. Oh, I apologize. Um, I didn't realize I was on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, when I read that question or hear that question, for me, um, I try to understand sort of the underlying cause. Like, why is that question being asked? And I'm wondering if it's coming from a place of fear and a place of anxiety and a place of feeling overwhelmed. So my sort of my answer to that would be to sort of break it down bit sized pieces why am i feeling anxious about this why is learning more creating this worry for me and how is it that i can um uh, tackle this where i'm not overwhelmed but i do it bit by bit and bit by bit pieces um i think that would be my answer to that so if you're working on an ayah or reading an extra ayah to read, get knowledge about it, to, to reflect on it, to talk to other people about it, your support community, your friends, your family, and see how you can apply it to your life or through Quran Reflect and get other people's feedback on this topic um, so that you know you're part of a community and we're all trying to get to our better place. Mm. That's what I would say. Interesting. Jazakumullah khair, that's interesting. And if you notice, you can always add uh, your commentary, right? So, uh, so I, I'm here, I, I, I have my answer, I'll go through my answer, but uh, you can always go in the commentary and add, and guess what? All of these reflections will be, uh, will be stored, it will be saved, they will be saved, you know? Which is awesome. So Amna, what's your handle in Quran Reflect? I think you shared. Um... I am actually learning what my handle is myself. <laughs> Let me just take a look at this. I, I found it. I found it. Oh, you did. Okay. Thank you. I found it. So here's the thing. Again, I can tag you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Of course, I did not. Uh, okay. See, so people now can go and find your page from my comment. Okay, perfect. Exactly. Uh, we had another comment. Uh, actually, let me read from Hamad. Hey, Hamad, salam alaikum. Uh, Allah looks at your intentions. Exactly. It's all about the intentions. But uh, yeah, 
what else? The fear is the way shaitan gets us so that we don't even start. Beautiful. This idea of fear, of sometimes perfectionist mindset, it's so, so that we don't even try to start. And Salwa, something is better than nothing. The, and in turn, as you learn the Quran, the application will come with time, whether you do it now or later. Beautiful. So this all or nothing mindset is actually one of the madakhil shaitan, one of the tricks of the shaitan. Beautiful. Uh, Zunaira, you, uh, you had a comment also? Zunaira? Not sure. Okay. Feel free. You can always unmute yourself later. Okay. So you guys have seen that we had a question, and this is a real question. Sometimes the question comes through a discussion from another person outside of this group, and sometimes it's in, within this group. And guess what? And normally when I get the question, I don't have the answer formulated ready. So, and that's the beauty of this session. It forces me uh, to uh, come up with the answer because I have to answer within a week. So uh, this, this, uh, this is the answer. Uh, I would say five or six or seven points. Uh, okay. Um, I, will give, I will leave it up to you guys to read. I'm, I'll, I'll post the thing. Uh, I'll post the comment, uh, no, the, uh, sorry, the whole link here. But the main point here was that, uh, or let me, let me give you one, 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 one quick comment, is that the fact that a believer is asking this question is by itself an indication of sincerity and faith. Just because someone is afraid they're not applying and they're, pra they're not practicing what they're preaching, it's a sign of sincerity. Al Hassan al Basri has a famous statement that hypocrisy, the one who feels safe from hypocrisy, is the hypocrite. And the one who's always accusing himself is the believer. So that's something to always keep in mind that just because you're asking about this, it's a sign of a healthy heart. SubhanAllah. So, yeah, that was one of these quickly those of the Quran questions. Um, so, again, we could keep this idea of receiving questions, soliciting questions from you guys and answering them through the lens of the Quran. And we could uh, go through the book uh, or we could do always a mix of both, you know, and again, to make this more uh, uh, a live session, inshallah. So, uh, but I like what we did as uh, in the voting. I think there was an unanimous agreement that everyone wanted to jump through the book and read the the, the uh, sections from the book so i think that's great so we'll consider now uh, let me go through the book the material uh, so i think the way we will do it inshallah at least for the first two months because i think it will take us two months maybe to finish the book maybe less maybe more is that we will read week one starting next week we'll do chapter one week two chapter two and uh, if we felt that a topic need, needs more attention, needs more uh, emphasis from us, then we can give it its, its due. We're not in a rush to finish anything. We just want to make sure that we're reading the book together and we are reflecting on it. And again, what I really hope, what I really uh, wish, what I really pray for from this group is for us to first, the ideal case, us reading the uh, the book together. Number two, coming to the sessions with questions, with comments, with reflections. And number three, which is the most important, turning that these questions and reflections and discussions into the uh, into the Quran reflect, right? So that again, we have our own hashtag with those of the Quran. And as you can tell, uh, these have this have been accumulated for over the past year, which is awesome. Alhamdulillah, I, we did not feel it. Sister Shireen Mansour also. Uh, Sister Shireen, she is in a different time zone and she couldn't attend our uh, sessions live because now it's literally it's like night in, uh, in her time. But mashallah alayha, she would uh, watch them recorded and she would document and, uh, uh, you know, and, and share her reflections and sometimes summaries of the sessions. So that was, I, I feel that was very awesome. Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward her and bless her. And guess what? The, the best part of this is that we have Sister Eli also as well. The best part of this, this is a sadaqa jariya for you. Because sometimes when we post things on social media, 
they may be lost in the wormhole of social media and it's very hard for people to find them. But this will be documented, this will be there inshallah ta'ala uh, for you. Uh, okay, so again, starting with the book or a question in mind, you bring, you, we bring all of that reflections, all of these questions here to this group and then we try our best once we have the discussion, once we talk, once we discuss, inshallah ta'ala, go and document here. So bi this way it will be bi a, a, a way for us to uh, document our knowledge and share and reflect and uh, what have you. So I hope that this makes sense. Uh, any, uh, any questions? I really want us to, uh, to plan this year to become contributors to the and join like the, I don't know, the thousands of the Muslim Ummah around the world who are contributing, who are documenting, who are sharing their experiences in the, about uh, the Quran. This is something that I'm very passionate about. Any questions? There's actually about documenting. I want to share with you a slide from my Quran, uh, sorry from my uh, Khatib workshop. So I gave a Khatib workshop um, in November. And of course it was a Khatib workshop, but we had brothers and sisters attend. And uh, that Khatib workshop was mainly for people who have been students of knowledge for a long time, and they feel they are not ready to create, to start sharing, to start, you know, writing posts or reflect or teach or what have you because they feel they are not ready. And uh, I shared with them this beautiful uh, uh, commentary about the life of Imam and Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, so again, this is all in the spirit of pushing you guys towards more يعني, contributing, not only consuming uh, knowledge. Uh, let me share my screen. My Zoom fitness is really bad. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Can you see the presenter? Uh, it says Imam Nawali and his uh, Nawawi. Yeah. Can you see the actual, the big screen? Or, or the presenter slides, the, the notes? Uh, I see the big screen, like the, with the okay. hand cursive color. Okay, perfect. Bismillah. Imam Nawawi and his learning style. So Imam Nawawi, rahmahullah ta'ala, he became a student of knowledge at the age 19, which is a late start, considering that Imam Shafi'i memorized the whole Quran at age 7, and others start very early on. Imam Nawawi was 19 when he became a student of knowledge. He wrote his first book at age 25 and passed at age 45, <clears throat> which is considered a very short, you know, lifespan of a scholar. But he had 12 halakas every day and uh, he had, he taught or received 12 halakas every day and he wrote 27 best-selling books. So think about, uh, like his books are bestsellers of all time. Of course, we, are, we have them for free, but technically he produced a lot of content, mashallah. Two chapters per day. The, uh, the, the, the scholars counted how many creation he, he created. Uh, simple style and deep content. He had some beginner material, like 40 hadith of Nawawi, intermediate material, such as Yar Salihin, and advanced material, such as Sharh al Nawawi ala Sahih Muslim, interpretation of Sahih Muslim. So he had, like, mashallah, tabarakallah, amazing content in his life, lifespan. And people ask, how was Imam Nawawi able to produce all that legacy? And of course, barakah is always the answer that we normally give, that barakah, spiritual blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here's, again, a reminder about our uh, uh, productive Muslim, which is basically, that's a way to uh, discuss barakah, a way to implement barakah into our lives. The, 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 the class will start, will start next week, inshallah ta'ala. So if you're interested, feel free to private message me if you want to join this cohort. But the idea of Imam Nawawi, it's not only Barakah. We always say, okay, Allah helped him. But it's not only that. Because remember that Allah helps 
you when you start helping yourself, when you start tying your camel, when you start doing something on your end. So it's not only barakah. I think that's very important for us to uh, comprehend. So Imam Nawi, he was authoring, he was documenting, not authoring. And I see that many people who have the capacity to teach or to document their notes, they, they don't do because they think they have to author. They, have, they think they have to be a scholar. And you don't have to be. Imam Nawi was technically collecting his notes from the halaqas that he took in his life and his notes became bestsellers. And once we understand this, we should feel empowered to contribute to platforms such as Quran Reflect or teach halaqas at your masjid or what have you. you it, chances are, if you have been a student of knowledge for a while, you should have enough content to share to the ummah. Don't be written yourself. Don't ki, ki, stay in this uh, mindset of, oh, I'm not ready. I am not good enough to start sharing uh, content. And of course, I'm not asking you to go give fatwa and give your opinion on complicated matters. I'm just telling you to share your notes with the world. So Imam Nawi has a, there's a lot, a beautiful commentary on him. al Isnawi rahimahullah, he said basically that he used his books as containers of knowledge and turned his notes into uh, publications, basically. Uh, uh, so another another comment about Nawawi, uh, uh, sorry, Al-Hafiz al-Baghdadi, he says, Man arad al-fa'idah fal yaksir qalam al-nasakh wal yahmil qalam al-takhrij. Meaning that those who want to benefit from the knowledge for themselves, let them break the pen, the pen of copying. Stop copying notes. Stop, stop cop, mindlessly copying notes for yourself. And instead, use the same note-taking mechanism to publish an article. And the idea here, if you are writing a note to be published to the world, you will put more effort, you will try to uh, invest more energy, you will uh, phrase your wording, you will be careful about your wording, you will edit. So this way, even if nobody read your post, at least you benefited from it because you're working on uh, not only documenting, you are authoring, you know. فَلْيَكْسِرْ قَلَمَ النَّسِخْ وَلِحْمِ قَلَمَ التَّخْرِيرِ Al-Biqa'i says that the one who copies does not review and digest what they are writing. Whereas the author has to ensure the quality and the coherence. Ibn Dayuan rahimahullah has a beautiful statement in one of the introductions of his book. He says, وَإِنَّمَا عَلَّقْتُهُ لِنَفْسِي وَلِمَنْ فَهْمُهُ قَاصِرٌ كَفَهْمِي I collected this book for myself and for everyone who has short, limited understanding such as my understanding. Very humble, very nice way, uh, very nice way of understanding that I am an author. Being an author does not mean that you, are, that you have finished knowledge, does not mean that you have figured it out. Could, you could be an author who is sharing beneficial knowledge with the ummah, while at the same time you are using that publishing experience for yourself, for your own notes, inshallah ta'ala. I hope that this makes sense and I hope that this encourages us all in this group to, uh, again, uh, when we attend, try to take notes with the intention to share these notes. And I would like to see, based on this uh, discussion, who is willing to start sharing and documenting at least one reflection on Quran Reflect this week. I just want you to look, at, look back at your uh, notes, something that you have learned, and, and you know what, make it super simple. Try to look at the notes that you have taken in Ramadan. So remember Ramadan, it's been like two weeks, subhanAllah, time is flying. Again, subhanAllah, this is one of the alamat al-sa'a. One of the alamat al-sa'a is taqarub al-zaman, the shrinkage of time. So, uh, so, mashallah, Hamad, Amna, Suhaila, Salwa, and Tanzila, bi'ithnillah, mashallah. So I want us to just I, I don't want you to read and try to get something up from scratch. And Rashida, mashallah, tabarakallah, jazakumallah khair. Jabir, bi'idnillah. Just go find your notes that you have collected or wrote down in Ramadan. And boom, if you want to go to Quran Reflect website and under the hashtag Quran Weekly Dose, try to mention that your intention from this is simply for your own self. Subhanallah. Beautiful. Khadra made the Quran Reflect account. Allah Akbar. So again, I, I really, I did not want us to jump through the material, which is the book 
before we get the pipeline of information, of barakah, of reflections, uh, of gems from the source, the source being the Quran, the Tafsir, the Halaqahs, and from our daily encounters to this Halaqah and then back to the whole world. Quran weekly dose. Thank you so much, Selwa. And if anyone wants help, again, we are in this group, in the WhatsApp group. It's meant to help each other, encourage each other, inshallah ta'ala. So I apologize for not starting with the chapter today, but uh, I, as I said, I did not read my chapter fully. I started reading, but I did not finish it. But inshallah ta'ala, uh, slowing down is, I think it was good because I want all of us to get the intention of sharing our experiences uh, on Quran Reflect. So if, if that makes sense, uh, please let me know if anyone has any questions or comments.